Father, we thank you. Faithful King. Faithful King. Pa sombra he so shitam braka sotia. If you can pray in the spirit, just pray for a few seconds. Lembro mene he so untambala bosia. Jambre behe koski le badosi le kante le breheta. Jambe mose le bantombre ke koski li hanta baboya. Ma sonden de bosi li ka baha soli ma. Janda mo ne ne mosa manakando be. Ya. Abombe bedi alambosa. Basha. 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 Kaliva son telebahaya. Imbambo be la kobe li himba sola baya. Mazombre kasko lebra kaso la dabaya. Jembra na manoske libra haso laba. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you this morning. Help us, Holy Spirit, in ways that only you can. Speak to us. Speak to our future. Speak to our destinies. Speak to the dark places of our lives. And let your light so shine. Let your light so shine. Thank you, eternal Father, and take all the glory. Thank you, Lord. It is done. In Jesus' name. Amen. It's truly a delight and an honor to be here this morning. Um, by God's grace, we're going to have a profitable discourse this morning, and I'm hoping that we can break it into two segments. One is going to be foundational, and the other is going to be instructive. Is that okay? Um, we recently began in our foundation something that we call the PIRAC. PIRAC simply means purple random acts of kindness. And what that simply means is that our team, they go to the streets of Abuja and they walk around the market or the streets anywhere and they, they pick up on granite sellers, pure water sellers. It doesn't matter who they are. They talk with them, find out who they are and then they give them financial help. Uh, many times between 10,000 to 20,000. And one of the things that we have discovered while doing this random act of kindness is that um, recently our team went out to, and they met four women. Four of them were widows, and four of them were mothers of five children. Some of them sold pure water, some of them maybe face mask or something where they make averagely, you know, 500 or something a day, something very meager. And then our team gave one of the women 10,000 naira. And the woman said to us that just some days ago, she and her friend were trusting God for 2,000 naira. Just some days ago. And she said that, is it possible that she has a friend that is selling just down the road? She had to give the friend one yam because the friend and her five children didn't have food to eat. So that is it possible for, for her to, can we permit her to take 5,000 from the 10,000 we gave to her to share with the other widow? She had five children. They just gave her one yam to feed five children and was wondering if she could get permission to share her 10,000 with with her colleague, because they were just praying for 2,000 naira. This is one out of four women that they were giving money casually. It's called random act of kindness. I mean, we don't need to know you. Some of them will ask, can I have your phone number? There's no need for that. I don't even follow them. The reason why I'm saying that is that there are people that are well-dressed but don't have food to eat. And while the worship was going on, I, I felt an impression in my spirit that there's somebody or some persons in this room. You are well dressed and they know you by name, but you are going through a problem that is too small to share. You didn't understand that. The reason why you can't share your problem is that it's too small to share. You can't allow anybody to know that it's 2000 that is your problem. You can't allow anybody to know. We met a woman that had diabetes. Dr. Grace will know that better. She could barely walk, sitting down, selling face masks. 
how much money can you make from selling face mask in Gariki? Now, how much did she spend to get there? Because she clearly does not live in Gariki. A woman who is selling face masks by the road cannot afford rent in the city. So she must have come from somewhere. How much face mask can you sell? With a swollen leg because of diabetes. Last year, June, I went for my yearly checkup and realized that for the first time that my blood sugar level was high. Um, and the doctors wanted me to take it seriously because my father was diabetic. Um, so they gave me some drugs to take. And then I went this year again for my yearly, I go for a yearly checkup. And I went this year for my yearly checkup. And um, as a follow-up, they said, I still need to be on some drugs. And they gave me a drug. One of the drug I bought, one, is over 20,000. One, one of the drugs. Now, this woman who has serious diabetes, imagine the struggle she's having by medicine. But she's selling face mask. The essence of money is not acquisition. The essence of wealth is distribution. Are you following that now? It is ungodly to be poor. I will show you this morning. It is unrighteous. You know why? Because poverty makes you selfish. When you don't have, you can't give. When you don't have, all you can do is to help you and your children. Do you understand that? And you are not wired to supply to only yourself and to your children. A man who does not have cannot help somebody else. And that is not kingdom life. You know, there's a way that lack can make your body weak. You don't know? No, you have not been lack. You have not gone through lack. I have gone through lack. There's a measure of lack that makes your body, you will be sick. Malaria will start. Some of you, the malaria you are treating is not malaria. Oh. <laughs> it's moniria. Moniria. It's moniria. It's, no anti malaria can help you. And you know because you treated malaria last month, last two months. It's not malaria. It's, school fees is near. That is the fever you are having. It's school fees fever. I need you to understand that you don't need money to serve God. We need to create some foundation. I think the first phase is foundational. You do not need money to serve God. And money should never be a motivation for serving God. Some men came to my room last night in the hotel. And I was sharing with them that when I began my work with God, I began my work with God in a deeper life setting. And we were trained to be invisible. So when I see people trying to showcase all of their things on social media, I don't understand because my foundation in Christ was to be invisible. Was to serve God without being noticed. Was to pursue God without any, any reward. All we wanted was to give all that we were to God. Now people are pursuing God for what they can get. So money should never be a motivation for following after God. Money should never be the reason why you are praying. Never. Money is too small to be a prayer point. But many of us are having sleepless nights because of the lack or the need for money. Number two thing I want to say on this foundational discussion is that God never gives cities. You have to write. Oh, if you don't know how to write, you have to write in this lecture. You write. Number one is that God is not a giver of cities. God is not a giver of cities. And I'll prove it to you. John chapter 14 verse 2. It says that in my father's house are many mansions there. In my father's house and many mansions there. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, Kalabasaya. Maniato. <laughs> uh, See, you have to follow carefully, please, please. The Bible says what? Where? In my father's house, there are many mansions. You know that song you sing? 
In my father's house, there are many mansions there. In, that song is not correct. They didn't put there in that, in that scripture. It's you that added there. It just says, in my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a mansion for you. Is that what they said? <laughs> Follow the sequence. Just be patient. This is foundational. In my father's house, there are mansions there. If the mansions were not there, I would have been honest enough to tell you. However, I am going to prepare a place for you, not a mansion. God does not give a harvest. God gives you land. You will take the land, plant the seed, and yield the harvest. God never gives a harvest. God will give you the place to farm. Fire. In my father's house, there are many mansions there. I'm sure you heard earlier that I'm an architect. So I am quite disturbed by this scripture. This scripture logically does not make sense. Because you can't find mansions in a house. I know that you can find houses in a mansion. Kalibaya. You are not following this thing. Normally, a mansion is a group of estates. When you say you have a mansion, a mansion is not a house. A mansion is when you have a collection of elegant buildings. Then you call it what? A mansion. So, in a mansion, there are houses there. But in kingdom, in a house, there's mansion. <laughs> but God doesn't give you mansions. He said that in his house, if it is his house that you have, in that house, there are mansions inside it. But when he goes, he will prepare a place for you, then you can unlock the mansions in the house. Jesus never gives cities. Except the Lord builds, the builders, they build, but they build in vain. The Lord will join you to coach you to build, but you have to be the builder. The only requirement is that the Lord should build with you. The Lord will not give you a house. The Lord will not give you a mansion. The Lord will not give you a harvest. He will provide you the seasons. He will give you the places and you create your harvest. The Bible says that a man's gifts will make room for him. So, I want to show you a construction of this mansion. When the Lord is set to build you a mansion, he gives you a gift. When you engage that gift, the gift will make room for you and bring you before great men. When you now engage the room, you can now enter the house. But in the house is where you create the mansion. Many of you have missed out on your mansion because you didn't collect the house. You think that what God has given to you is too small to be multiplied. When God is said to build you a mansion, he affords you a house. You must multiply it into a mansion. I say that to say this. There's nobody in this room that has a money problem. Come on, say that. I don't have a money problem. Everybody in this room has got money. You may not have the money that you want to have, but you have money. You know why I can say that? I should prove it to you. Because you are not naked. Is anybody, is anybody naked here? From the back? Fully naked? Okay. If you are not naked, you have money. Because you can sell your shirt for 200 naira. You can sell your shoe for 1,000 naira. You can sell your watch for 3,000 naira. That phone you are using for Instagram, you can sell it for 8,000. As long as a man or woman is not naked, they have money. So money is not a problem. Nobody has a money problem. You have a mind problem. You have a management problem. Everything that God gives always comes as a seed. 
That's why God will never give you an 18-year-old child. Have you seen that before? He made that mistake with Adam and Eve. He, he has not tried it again. He gave birth to a grown man and grown woman. He saw that that doesn't work. So from there on, everything that God gave, he always gives as what? A seed. Because one of the principles of wealth, I will show you now, is that if you cannot make more money, you save more money. Nobody has a money problem. God is not wicked. Remember that. God will always give you enough. But when God gives you enough, it's never a mansion. He will give you a room. You will make that room into a house and you will make that house into what? A mansion. Number four foundational truth is that money is not prosperity. I know the theme of this meeting is that the Lord will build a city through prosperity, but money is not prosperity. If all that you have is money, you are not prosperous. As a matter of fact, if all that you have is money, you are very poor. Because money is not what? It's not prosperity. And the intention of God is that I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health. What's the last line? Even as your soul prospers. There is no money I will take if it will make me lose one hour of my sleep. No. There is no wealth that is wealth enough to take my sleep away. Because I want to live in prosperity, in good health. The reason why I go for checkup every year, once every year, since I turned 40 last year, is because of prosperity. If you have money and you're not well, is it, is it prosperity? Okay, you have one billionaire and you and your wife have not spoken for three months. Is that prosperity? Okay, you have two billionaires and your children are afraid to come and meet you for advice. Is that prosperity? Prosperity is a state of success which is only possible by a balanced life. Write it down. Prosperity is a state of success that is only possible by a balanced life. You see, the reason why I'm saying this is because I want to teach you about money. And I'm afraid that if I don't show you the foundation before I show you how to make money, money can finish you. Oh, you don't know? Oh, I will tell you. I have friends that have made money. I, I, can't, I can't recognize them again. Some of them leaders in church with three or four girlfriends. Some of their girlfriends I know. Yes. Tongue-speaking believers. I knew them before money came. I know them after money came. Money is heavy. You need stamina to carry it. Are you following me? So money is not prosperity. But money is required for prosperity. Eh? Uh -huh. So don't say, a person, money is not prosperity, so I can do without money. I am well. My, my children are happy. My wife is happy. Uh, it's a lie. If you don't have money, you're not prosperous. Because it is, like I said, it's a balance what? If you have good health, good children, good house, good wife, and no money in your accounts, you are not prosperous. Because it's a balanced life yes so number four number five foundational truth is that if you earn money once in a month you are poor don't be angry don't be angry <laughs> don't be angry. if they follow me outside i will run because <laughs> don't be angry if I don't care how much they are paying you. Look, look at me. Look at me. If you are working in NNPC and they are paying you one million naira a month, eh? if your earnings happens once a month, mark my words, mark my words, thou art poor. Yako salabaya. Should I prove it to them? Lamanakaya. Are you ready for this one? Yes. Let me show you. Let me show you. Let me show you a scripture. 
And I know you won't like me, but let me just show you. Genesis chapter 26, verse 22. And he removed from thence and did another well. And for that they strove not. And he called the name of it what? Rehoboth. And he said, For now the Lord had made what? See, room again. See the room again. Not mansion. The Lord had made a room for us. And then they spoke of what the Lord has done. Then they told you what they will do. And we shall be fruitful in the land. I see, I see the same science. The Lord made the room. We have to be fruitful. Are you seeing that now? But that's not what I want to show you. What I want to show you here is that they dug a well. Come on, say a well. Say dig. Lamoya. There is a supply that comes from the clouds. It's called rain. You know, it's not only the cloud that supplies water. Are you aware? You know, when Noah was in the ark, the Bible said that water came out of the ground and came out of the clouds. Do you remember? So when you want to source water, don't only look up. There is water that comes from the ground. But I want to show you a mystery. When you look up, you look up for the rain. But the rain is seasonal. Mm. You are not following this thing. There are virtues that are seasonal. And there are virtues that have no respect for season. There are supplies that are seasonal. And there are supplies that have no respect for seasons. There are certain dimensions of the blessings that can only come from the clouds. And there are dimensions of the blessings that can come from the ground. But the cloud can only give you seasonal blessings. When you want a blessing that defiles seasons, you must dig. Lemonaya. To harvest the rainwater, all you need is a basin. Many of you here carry basins. You will get this mystery in two years. Don't worry. Many of you here are carrying what? Basins. So every time it's rainy season, you bring out your basin and put under the rain to collect water. Many of you here are water collectors using basins. So your supplies are seasonal. You get money only the 30th day of every month. It's called wells. But you know why many of you don't have wells? Because it takes time and work. And you prefer to do, Father, I receive, I receive, I receive. Give offering, 2,000. I wait for my harvest, I wait for my harvest, I receive it, I receive. You have been receiving for eight years, where are you? Honey, we need to... We need to repair the car. The tire is old. When can we buy tires? You have to wait for a month. And my wife, you know now. Abraham and Isaac didn't become generational by collecting rainwater. Because life will blow you sometimes to some location where the rain is minimum. So if you are depending on the rain, what happens when God moves you to a location where the rains are minimal? Now when you are digging a well, you may be digging and digging. Now let me tell you what happens to well. <laughs> if you are truly digging a well, the well will bury you. Are you agree? Do you agree? Because the well is deeper than your height. Oh, you are not getting this wisdom. Normally, if you are digging a well, a point will come, nobody will see you again. Because you are underground digging, digging, digging. I've been digging for years. They didn't see me. They say, Later, her. And I say, Hey, later, her. You didn't know me three years ago. But I've been digging for years. I've been digging since I was 24. I just turned 40 last year. 
My father began to go bankrupt at 40. My father, he was a director in BCC. He began to go from BCC, from BCC. Hear me! From BCC, multi-millionaire. A point came that we were selling pure water. You know, pure water of those days, not this one they seal now, not sachet water. The one you tie, that you can put tangerine inside. We'll do something with tangerine. Orange tangerine, mango tangerine. You know that type of mommy? That's the one where it's my father, a director of BCC. Because he was a rain collector. He was what? A rain collector. I was in the car with my father of blessed memory. When a man advised him to come and buy land in Abuja, he said, there's no need. There's no need. There's no need because the rain was falling. Ah, there was heavy rain. He had buckets. He had business. He had drums collecting the rain. But rain, no matter how heavy they fall, is bought for a season. You may be a director of BCC and they are giving you 3 million every month, 4 million every month, gratuity, travel allowance. My brother, my sister, it is rain. I had the opportunity to be a rain collector. Many years ago, I determined from 25, I will never be a rain collector. Because I saw my father, multi-millionaire, the one and only Iwosko, the owner of this, owner of drugs, blah, 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 blah. Politician, here, here, here. He, he wasn't just a ring collector. He was, he acquired, he acquired, he acquired items, but not assets. You know, you can have a business and own 20 trucks and own 50 locations of, of your shop does not mean that you have secured the future. Because trucks can have accidents. Engine can fail. Eh? You can't transfer trucks to your children. Can you send, my dear son, when you are 18, this truck is your own. <laughs> what you are leaving for him is iron. It's not truck again. 18 years time, that truck will be what? Just metal. You must be a well digger to know the difference between items and assets. Dig. So, don't be offended. If you are earning money once a month, you are poor. My father was poor, even though he was a billionaire. Am I, are you seeing what I'm saying? My father was poor, even though he was a millionaire. Because in his very lifetime, we tied pure water. In his very lifetime, I was sending him money for feeding at 24. I began sending money to my father at 24. I didn't have to. I was squatting in Abuja. I was squatting, sleeping on the carpet on the floor in somebody's house. And I was still sending money home. Because he was a rain collector. So, the next foundational truth is that if you're earning money once a month, you are thou art. I know that you are poor. It doesn't sound spiritual. <laughs> if thou earnest money, <laughs> if thou earnest money once a month, thou art The next foundational truth is that money answers all things. I'm sure you know the scripture. Money answers all things. Now, I know, I know, I know you're about to assume that I want to be carnal, but just be patient with me. You see, many times when we hear that scripture, we think that it's saying that money is the solution to everything. Never. I just told you now that if all you have is money, you are poor. So money cannot be the solution to everything. But the Bible says that money answers everything. Can I prove that to you? Are you sure? Please, can you come, sir? The guy in purple. Yeah, come, come. So, so the, the, the one in purple. Yeah. Have you gotten the 17 people? Yeah. 
Okay, come, come. Um, stand here, please. What's your name? Emmanuel. Huh? Emmanuel. So this is Emmanuel, right? Yes. Okay, um, Tony. 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 Why are you not answering? That's not my name. Huh? That's not my name. Tony. Tony. Why are you rude? You are a rude boy. Why are you not answering my, my call? That's not my name. You are what tribe? I'm thief. You are, you are thief? Yes. Aba Hole. Uklobe. Inchebe. Aholoi. Emmanuel, you are, it's like you are a rude guy. Are you born again? <laughs> Why are you not answering me? Because I'm not listening to what you are saying. You can't understand what I'm saying. You know, I called the name, he didn't answer. Offense number one. I was greeting him, he didn't answer. Offense number two. Why do you think he couldn't answer the name or answer my greeting? Because I was calling him by a name that wasn't his name and I was speaking a language that he could not understand. Money has a name and money has a language. If you can call money by its name, and you can speak the language of money. Money will answer you. I told you guys two days ago that busyness is not business. <laughs> you know, many of you, what you have is busyness. Ape, I'm coming. Eh? Where are you? I'm in Boko. I'm buying rice. Eh? Ape, where are you? Eh? I'm in Kaduna buying yam. Ape, where are you? Eh? I'm in Sokoto buying shoe. How much do you have in your account? Uh, it is well. <laughs> There's no money that is called it is well. <laughs> How are you? Thank God. There is a language that money understands. If you can call money by the right name and speak the right language to money, money will answer you. Evidence who had 35,000 error was coached on how to speak the language of money and in less than two years saved two million from 35,000. Two million from 35,000. Are you following me? Magodi, there's no money. Ijen Young, there's nothing, nothing is here. Nothing is here. Let's go to Abuja. I came from Abuja to Magodi. I'm, a, I'm an Abuja man, a father of three children and a husband of one wife. They are all in Abuja, but the bakery is here. There is a language to money. You want to Jakba to Canada? Mm. The blessing is not coming from abroad, it's from above. If you find the right well, it will answer. Listen, guys. Oh, mania po salapata. The Bible said that Isaac dug again. Isaac dug again. Isaac dug again. Isaac dug again. And this time, the Bible said, and they strove not. Isaac had two challenges. Number one was that when he dug before, he didn't find water. And where he found water, they fought the well with him. Am I correct? But the Bible said, and he removed from thence and digged another well. This is to say he has been digging wells. You, you have digging only half. You dug three meters down. He said, ah! I pay, you don't understand. For four years, I have dug three meters. Nothing came out. So I'm going to my father's house. Your mates are digging hundred meters. And we don't see well there. What are there? They go to another place again and dig again. It's okay to dig another well. By God's mercy, I am, I am a blessed architect. We have more jobs in our office than we can handle. So, it's not like I'm struggling. It was not out of struggle that we opened bakery. It's just a search for wells. And many times, the wells are in unlikely places. The things that you are ignoring, that Okada you don't want to buy. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Come on, say dig. 
Say dig now. Say, I told you to be angry. Pastor, I told you. Uh-huh. Thank you very much. Money answereth all things. You may be Yoruba, you may be Igbo, you may be Idoma, Igala, Thief, it doesn't matter. If you call money by the right name, it will answer. If you speak the la- right language to money, it will answer. So, I have to move to the instructions. Is that okay? Because, because of the time. I just want to make sure that I give you guys some, some instructive tools to use on how to, on how to make money. Is that okay? So, I, I'm, going to, I'm going to share a few things. Um, so, I will, I will, I'll call them out. You write them down, and then we'll see how far we can go. I have just 20 or 30 minutes now. I have less than 20 minutes. So we have to run very fast. Number one is investment. Write it down. So write the, the headings. Write, write financial intelligence. Financial intelligence. Number one is investment. Number two is savings. Number three is control and exposure. Don't worry, I'll read them again. Number four is profit and profiting. I can't touch distances. Number five is leakage control. Hmm? So number one is what? Let me hear you please. Number one is what? Number two is what? Number three is what? Number, number four is what? Profit and profiting. Number five is what? So let's just try and just let me just touch on them very quickly so we can bring this to a close in the next few minutes. Number one is investment. Investment is the money that you spend or you send into your future. Write it down. Investment is money that you spend and you send into the future. I chose those two words carefully. I know some of you will think that using spending does not flow with investment. But when you use money, you spend money. Am I correct? The real question is not that you should not spend money. Because people will say things like, don't spend money, invest money. As though money invested is not money spent. Money invested is money spent. It's just that it's money spent forward. When you invest, you spend money forward. So every investment must be future driven. Number one. Number two, every investment must have a lifespan of at least at least 10 years so it simply means that a car cannot be what you call an investment if you buy uber to do uber or do both uber is a business don't call it an investment there is a difference between building businesses and building investments it's very important sometimes that to build your investment, you must first build businesses. And you don't have to quit your job if you're a government worker or you're working somewhere else. You don't have to quit your job to own a business. Many times we think that the reason why we can't own a business is because we have a job. And there's nothing wrong with having a job and still owning a business. The whole idea, like I said, is that you want to make sure you are earning money more than once a month. So you can have a job and still buy a goosey and store. Am I correct? You can have a job and still buy Okada and monitor it. You can have a job and still learn tailoring and sew during the weekends. Am I correct? You can have a job and still buy gold. Save your gold for three months and sell it. So you can buy gold, rock the gold to a wedding. And then it's still still a business. I see what I'm saying now. It's a rockacious item. (laughs) And it's still a business. But the goal should never be owning businesses. My father owned businesses, but he didn't have investments. My father had tr- trucks, trailers. They called them in Wosco those days. But after a few years, they were all gone. If he knew better, he should have taken the money from the business to build investments. Because investments is what you can transfer to your children. That's why you must have a lifespan of at least, what? 10 years. But like I said, sometimes you will need to build businesses 
to establish investments. And many of you here want to buy land. I want to buy land in high level. Who said so? Who said so? Who said so? You must learn how to speak the language of money. Oh. There are ways to make things happen by the wisdom of God if the Lord is building with you. Eh? Uh-huh. Except the Lord builds, the builders they build. The builders are building, but they are building in vain. So if you, if you, if you engage God in your building, you won't build in vain. McDonald's have a strategy. The strategy of McDonald's is that they want to increase their asset portfolio as they increase their businesses. So McDonald's now, for every place that they open a McDonald's um, restaurant, they buy the building. I seen that now. Because you can have many restaurants, but you are renting all. So if God forbid, the hype for that restaurant passes. The person is finished. Am I correct? Because there's nothing to his name. Every building he used was rented. Nothing to show. He didn't buy land. He didn't buy any assets. But he had 15 branches of laundry. I seen that now. But if he owned the 15 buildings that he was doing laundry, and the laundry business crashes, he will have 15 buildings to sell. And that 15 building may give him more than 200 million naira to start all over again. I seen that now. So investment is money spent forward. But like I said, you need to learn and cultivate how to spot businesses. And businesses is not busyness. And I will show you what is a business. That's where we talk about profit and profiting. Oh my goodness, time. Time. So can we move to savings? Because of time. There's so much to say on investment, but time, time, time. Then let me say this very quickly. Let me say this very quickly. Investment is a type of savings. Write it down. Investment is a type of savings. Um, especially in our Buhari government. <laughs> Imagine, imagine, can we imagine something now? Imagine that you had 5 million in your account as at December last year. Eh? You worked very hard and for three years you saved 5 million naira and put in one account December last year. You know, today is what? This is September, right? Nine months after. You know, you would imagine that you still have 5 million. You know, that's what you think. But in the real sense, what you have it's about 2.2 million. Because what you could buy with 5 million in December, if you even have 8 million, you can't buy it today. Does that make any sense? That's why you need to find investments as an option for your savings. Three, four years ago, dollar was 300 naira to dollar. Now it's 700 per dollar. Are you seeing that now? So you must cultivate devotion to investments. And many times to build your investment portfolio, you have to build your business portfolio. But the end of the business must be in investments. Whatever that is. Some of you, the investment, you may not be able to buy land, but you want to just keep putting a business, but be very careful. Oh, time. Because that's where we are going to we control and exposure but let's go to savings hmm? let's, let's rush through it i have just five minutes now sorry so savings number one is that if you can't make more money save more money if you can't make more money save more money now let me tell you this very quickly the real virtue of saving money is not really in the amount you save it's in the habit of saving saving money is like doing exercise Sometimes you may not be able to do exercise for one hour, but doing exercise 10 minutes every time, doctor, am I correct? Being able to just do exercise 10 minutes every time is still a virtue. So you may not be able to save 10,000 naira, but can you save 500 naira? Can you save 1,000 naira continuously for three years? Can you do that? I want to buy a beaker, and so is beaker. The beaker we have AC. My car has AC. Beaker has four tires. My car has four tires. Beaker has radio. My car has radio. Eh? 
So why am I buying a big car? You know, when you buy big cars, most times it's for other people. You didn't get it. Many times when people buy big cars, it's to impress other people. Because if, it's, if you are really buying it for yourself, the one you are driving has AC. He has radio. He has gear. The same four tires. Complete. I even have spare. I have spare tire. <laughs> uh, the reason why that doesn't matter now is because I'm a digger. When I'm set to buy a big car, I'm not buying a car, sir. I'm buying convoy. No, I will bring them here. Mark my words. What is a convoy? A convoy is two cars or more. <laughs> because by the grace of God we have found Rehoboth yes be happy from you you are happy like you are jealous Rehoboth but you have to wait for Rehoboth to come. You will save for eight years. You will save for nine years. I told you, when you are digging, the, the well will bury you. Nobody will see you. We have been digging. My family has not seen me. When they say there's an event, I will give them 100,000 here, 50,000 there. I can give far more. But let me stay in my quiet corner. Eh? Because I'm inside the well. I'm still digging. I'm just 41 years old. I have four more years. There's a plan. To dig aggressivity 45 by God's grace. By 45, we can come out from the well and wash our bodies small. Receive fresh air. Then maybe 50, we start digging new wells. By God's grace. Money answers. Money is not a mystery. Money is meant to be controlled. It's not meant to control you. Money is meant to be mastered. It's not meant to master you. So let me just say one more thing. My time is up already. Sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. But my time is up. So I'm going to say one more thing. I'm going to say one thing that I think um, is more important to you guys here um, than other things is the last point. What's the last point? Leakage control. I would have taught you about um, next time about um, exposure and control but we can't do that now, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry but let me just touch quickly on leakage control now, but, no, let me say this the reason why many of you became victims of MMM, how many of you know MMM? don't worry we are forgiving you, just <laughs> don't be ashamed, you are forgiving you know MMM? how many of you did MMM? You are, you are forgiven in Jesus' name. Oh, yeah. Some of you here have done MMM. Some of you have done um, Bitcoin. Uh -huh. Some of you have done those things. The reason why you suffered that loss was because you, you didn't understand the principles of control and exposure. In investments, anywhere you don't have control, you must limit your exposure. When you put money in MMM, you have no control. You don't know where their office is. You don't have any brother there. You don't know their address. You have zero control. They made you a fantastic offer, but they gave you zero control. But they gave you an offer that will instigate your exposure. So many of you gave 100,000 and they will give you 20% every month. If you had come for this lecture, you would have known that even if you want to invest more money. Wait until you have made 400000 from that 100000 Then you'd have taken 200000 from your profit and put back there. But some of you, you put 100000 they will give you 20 k every month, and then in three months, you went to go and meet your brother-in-law, your sister-in-law, your enemy-in-law, and took 10 million naira and put in MMM. Because you didn't understand the principles of control and exposure. Anywhere you lack control, reduce exposure. There's nothing you say to me that will make me go and buy more ovens for my bakery now. Won't do that. Because I'm controlling my exposure. 
the bakery must make a certain amount of profit before I buy more machines. We are, by God's mercy, God has really helped us with the bakery. The bread is everywhere. But that is not loud enough to deceive me to go and put 20 million naira more in the bakery. I won't do it. They must, make, they must return back a certain amount of the equity investment before I put one naira more. They have told me, sir, the demand is too much. We cannot meet the demand. Can we buy two more ovos? I said, no. Because I'm controlling my exposure. Even though it's a business where we have control, I am still controlling my exposure. So whenever you think of a business, think about control and exposure. You want to buy a land, control and exposure. Why buy a land of 10 million in an area you are not sure of? Go and buy a land of 300,000 first. And control your exposure. Is that making sense? So let me touch on profit and profiting. Now the reason why that is important for Africans is that many of you, you have a good business. And you are making profits. But you are not profiting. Hmm. Some of you, every time you make money, you put all the money back in your business. Every time you make money, no, no. It, it, sounds, it sounds very... It sounds very good, very experienced. It sounds like wisdom, but it's not wisdom. When they make profit in uh, Litoa, they move it to my account. Oh, before I will hear a story that touch. <laughs> you know, because sometimes you can amass profit 20, 30 million. They say, okay, so where's the 20 million? They say, oh, sir, oh, we didn't tell you. You know, we have to pay 5 million somewhere here. We have to pay 3 million somewhere here. We have to pay 4 million somewhere here. But if they had given you that money, they would have found other ways to solve that problem still in that business. So every month, by the first of the new month, they wire, declare profit to a, an account. Yes. Because I want to profit from my profits. Some of you, you are making profit, but you are not profiting. You pay all your workers every month. You pay house rent every year. You pay consumables every month. But nothing, check your record. You, don't, you are not making any money. But you say, ah, we sold 20 million. How much profit? There's no profit. Your turnover is not your profit. You may have 20 million naira sales. That doesn't mean you have 20 million naira profits. If you check your house rent, check petrol, check salaries, check consumables, you will see that you are losing money. The business is selling, but it's not profiting you. There, there seems to be like a profit. You, you bought things of 2 million, you sold for 2.2. Is that profit? Is that profit? No, answer me. You bought something for 2 million and you sold it for 2.2. Is that profit? No, hear me again. You bought something for 2 million. You sold it for 2.2 million. Is that profit? Yes. How much is the profit? 200,000. Then you start declaring and testimony. I made 200,000. But you forgot that your house rent is 1.2 million. You have three staff you are paying 10, 10,000. If your house rent is one million, that means in a month you are paying eighty thousand, and you are paying salary of forty thousand naira. That means you are spending one twenty. Your petrol for your gen is twenty thousand naira. That is one forty. I see that now. Your consumable is thirty thousand naira. That is one seventy. So in the actual sense, your profit on the two million was thirty thousand. But in your record, you say, I made profit of what? 200,000. And so many of you are making profits, but the profit is not profiting you. And that has killed many businesses in Africa. The last point is leakage control. Leakage control is very important in Africa because in Africa, in, 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 in Africa, you have to help your mother, you have to help your father, your brother-in-law, uh, your sister-in-law, your brother's child, uh, your uncle's neighbor. <laughs> sir, my correct, sir? Uh, you have half brother. <laughs> Even half enemy, you are helping them. <laughs> and that constitutes a lot of leakages. Hear this. Write it down. Problems do not kill. 
What did I say? Can I prove it to you? In COVID-19 lockdown, you couldn't send money to anybody for three months. Did they die? Problems will not kill them. Why give them today the blessings that can change their lives in three years? If you keep setting of this money you are giving everybody and use it wisely in three years you can change their lives. You have given them all the money today. Three years all of you are begging. The Bible says in Corinthians give with equality. The Bible says in Corinthians go and check it up. I'm not making it up. Don't give to a point that you are in need. It's in the Bible. Corinthians 7 or 8, 1st or 2nd Corinthians. Check it up. Media guys, look for it for me. Give with equality. Do not give to a point that it puts you in need. It's in Corinthians. Leakage control. Some of you, when you have money, look up now. Some of you, when you have money, it's like a spirit. They just paid you gratuity, two million. Your body will just be shaking like this. you by yourself, you will call your sister. Uh, Julie, how are you? I have one two million. Do you, do you, do you, do you need any money? <laughs> Only you. Julie did not call you. Then Julie said, hey, it's true. My rent is due. Can you borrow me 150? You know that Julie will not pay you that money. Is it? Can't you just leave the money there? For six months, just leave it there. Can you do that? No. The moment you see a large bam. <laughs> Restlessness. Have you seen it? Second Corinthians 8:14. Open it for us. Let's see. As we close. There's some of you, you just come and declare offering in church. Pastor, I'm, I'm led. You are not led, though. <laughs> Is that thing, that same thing that is doing you? Pastor, I'm led. You are not led. You are not led. Invest that money, then in 10 years, and you give the church 10 million naira. Is that not better? You have not given, out of the 2 million, you've given church 1 million now. You've given church 1 million now. Then 3 months later, you are coming to meet Pastor Rima for prayers. <laughs> Leakage. But by an equality that now at this time your abundance may be a supply for their want, that their abundance also may be a supply for your want, that they may be equality. There must be a balance when you give money. Some of you haven't heard God, you heard emotions. When God even told Isaac, told Abraham to kill Isaac. When Abraham raised his hand and God said, don't touch that boy. And if it's some of you, you will kill that boy. You, you see, me, me, I heard God three days ago. I heard him bang, bang, bang like this in my ear. That kill thy son, thy only son, Isaac. You say, get behind me, Satan. Meanwhile, that voice you heard was God's voice. He said, don't kill the boy. Many of you, you have killed your Isaac. And when God gave Abraham that instruction to kill Isaac, he was referring to what he said in Romans that you give a living sacrifice. There is a sacrifice that you give that does not require death. Some of you have killed your Isaacs because you are, you are overwhelmed by zeal and not wisdom. Zeal. It looks righteous. Zeal for the Lord. Zeal for the Lord. You can't give your mother money, but you give the church all your money. Your mother doesn't have house rent of 80,000. You can't send your mother 80,000, but you are giving the church 800,000 for money they don't need. The Bible says, Give and it shall be given unto you. This is a gift to the church. Just give. Sometimes the way to obey God is give to your father, give to your mother, give to others, and create a balance in your giving. Give to the church, yes, but there must be a balance. Give, but hear God first if you are giving extra. Hear God, though. 
Don't say all giving we eat harvest. It's not true. The Bible says some seed fell on hard ground. Some fell on stony ground. Some fell on good ground. Not every seed falls on a good ground. Stop throwing seed everywhere. Prophet seed. Marriage seed. Dream seed. Enemy seed. What's your problem? Who is pursuing you? Leakages. And God gave you that money as a seed to raise an empire. Not to just give an offering, but to build a church. You don't, you don't know you can do that? Sometimes the money you are giving now as one million offering, if you had used it wisely, in three years you can build a full church for that same church. You gave that one million naira three years after their secret offering. Don't quote me. I'm not saying don't give offering to this church. Give. But I'm saying hear God. Are you hearing me now? Hear God. Hear God. Stop giving as though God is a God is a gambler. You, you are a father. If your child doesn't say good money, won't you pay his school fees? Eh? You make it look as though if, if I don't give, because my sister made that comment one time. Things were going so bad in her life one season. She said, maybe it's because I've reduced my offering in church. I was broken to tears. That has God become a gambler? Has God become a cocaine dealer? A money changer? That if you don't give God money, God will not bless you. It's not a wicked God. Don't make God into a wicked God. When you didn't have, he gave you. So why must we give him to give you? What, what do you have that he doesn't have? Sometimes when God gives you money is to help somebody that you don't even know. Alright? But when you give, make sure that you have what I call leakage control. Leakage control. Many times we have what is needed but it keeps leaking away. Family problems. Community problems. Ego problems. You want to prove to everybody that you have arrived. So you go and rent a new house. What are you renting a new house for? What are you renting a new house for? So I tell you this story. My father came to Abuja before he died. He said, Ape, when will you build your house? This was many years ago. I said, why? You know, you know I mean, you are doing well. Try and build something. If you can't even buy a land in Abuja, go to like Maraba, Karo, and buy something and build something, no matter how small, even if it's a bungalow, just build something. So I asked him a question. I said, Daddy, when you were coming to see me here, where did you say you were going to? He said, to your house. I said, no. As you were coming to this house I'm renting, where did you say you were going to? He said, to a pair's house. I said, very good. Any house I'm living and I'm paying the rent is my house. I must not build a house to have a house. When it's time to build, I will build easily. Because I'm building other things now. The things I'm building will eventually build a house for me. When I, some of you are going to build a house in advance of your level. What are you building a house for now? Your rent is 300000 What are you rushing for? Calm down and enjoy the rent. When it's time, you will build easily. Use that money to build other things that can build you a house in three years' time. There is time for everything. Rise up to your feet. We will rise, Kalabosha, in your name, Adonai, you reign on high.
listen. Trains are breaking. Yes, trains are breaking. Trains are breaking. Listen, listen, listen. For those people who wrote their names, I want you to know that the money you'll be given is not money. It's a mantle. It's a mantle. It's a mantle. I'm going to make it 200,000 for 20 people. It's a mantle. It's a mantle. And it's not a mantle just for the 20 people that will get it. It's a mantle for this house. It's a transfer of grace. Chains are broken. Amen. Some of you, you are working hard. You are trying. You are praying. You are honest. What is that they say? There's an iron bar. You go, you hit it, come down. You go, you hit it, it comes down. That bar is broken. Amen. Some of you is ancestral limitations. It's like a line has been drawn. Nobody goes past here. Listen, I cross my family line. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you will cross it. Hallelujah. There are things that we are daring by God's grace that nobody has dared in our lineage. Nobody! Because if God builds the house with the builders, the house will stand. You will cross that line. Amen. The intention of God is to give you an expected end. As long as your end has not come, your desires will come. So you will sing this song prophetically. We are rising. Are we rising? Yes, sir. Yes. David said to Goliath, I come in the name of the Lord. I may have a catapult and a small stone, but the spirit behind the stone is bigger. In Brosella Baha Sota Basha, and, and here, 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 here. If you're not born again, this is your day. This is your day. I'm not calling you out wherever you are. Just put your hand on your chest very quickly. Let me pray this prayer. I declare this um, um, prayer over you. But if you're not born again or you are backsliding, put your hand on your chest. I want to pray for you quickly, quickly, quickly. Say after me, Lord Jesus. I can see you. I see you. Say, Lord Jesus. I'm a sinner. Forgive me my sins. Come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I believe you died and you rose again. Become the Lord of my life. I am born again. I am restored in the name of Jesus. So we're going to sing that song one more time prophetically. <laughs> Pastor, you hear testimonies. You, you, things are going to happen, guys. Things are going to happen, guys. Listen. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Listen, listen. Look at me, please. Please, I beg you. I'm begging you. Please. Believe. Believe. I'm begging you. Believe. Money will not solve your life problems. But you can live a better life. That's the agenda here. It's not money. It's to live a better life. It's possible. Believe. Madonna, you reign on high. We will rise. We will rise. Oh, 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 oh,
up. All we have to say this morning is thank you. Thank you for your visitation. Thank you for the word that came. Thank you for the chains that have been broken. Thank you for the mantle, the grace, for ease, for success, for good success. To multiply the seed you have given us. Thank you because our rooms are becoming mansions. Thank you for the grace to dig, to dig. Oh, we've been carrying baskets, collecting water. And before you know it has finished. Where well, we can dig a well. And some of us, some of us, you don't have strength to dig much. But God is renewing your strength to dig. Hallelujah. Because there's no two ways about it. We must dig and find water. Daddy, thank you because you're making room enough for us. Room enough. So that your house can be built to our prosperity. Can you bless God's servants? Can you please bless, bless him? With such kind of help God has given him, there might be battles around his life. The Lord will preserve him. The Lord will fight for him. The Lord will keep him. These are examples. God always have life testimonies. And that's why there's a grace. When somebody is sharing from his walk with God, his experience, what he has done, just, he has tasted. It's different from someone just, just talking from theory. He's sharing life examples. Pray the Lord will preserve The Lord will uphold him. Thank you, Father. Strengthen your servants. Keep him in health. Keep his family. He's doing so much, so much. He just share a little bit of the testimonies of what God is doing to his life. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Oh, Father, thank you. Thank you. Take all the glory. Take all the glory. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen.